I'm Andine St. Leventhal. And I'm Elliot P. Gershwin. And you're listening to NBR's Cultural Icons with Elliot and Andine. Today's episode of Cultural Icons is sponsored by Mexico's Juarez Cartel, sending the message that their grip will never loosen. <clears throat> uh, we have been told to say that we have received $1 million from them to sponsor our program and that the Juarez people are good guys and that they love America. One million dollars. However, we will continue to accept sponsorship from other companies and organizations. (laughs) Mexico's Juarez Cartel. They are good guys and love America. As always, our show is supported by listeners Listeners like like you. you. Apple's technology has changed our lives forever by every standard, and its impact on our culture will forever reside in the Apple icon and the name of the late CEO, Steve Jobs. On August 24, 2011, Apple hired a new CEO to succeed Jobs. He rescued Apple out of its plummeting sales in 1998 and increased the company's worth to $100 billion. Our cultural icon today is CEO of Apple, Tim Cook. Welcome to the show, Tim. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Nice to be with you all today. I have to say it's quite an honor. The release of the Apple Watch, uh, you've, the iPhone 6 a while back, uh, you seem to constantly be turning out genius. Well, thank you. Uh, we're really excited about releasing the Apple Watch Uh, It takes everything that you love about your iPhone 6 and your iPhone 6 Plus and puts it on your wrist where you can control it at all times, in all situations. And the things that our developers are going to make with this watch are going to shock you. I can't wait to see what our users are going to do with this watch. It's like we're unleashing a new idea into the world and letting our users and our shareholders play with it. What are some of the features of this Apple Watch? Well, an Apple, well, Apple Watch is really an extension of your phone. Your phone can stay in your pocket, but yet be with you at all times on your wrist. Now, that's through Bluetooth connectivity, uh, and as well as cellular and Wi-Fi connectivity. So you can receive a phone call on your phone, your iPhone 6 or 6 Plus, or iPhone 5S, and answer it with your watch. There, there's 18 different sensors in this watch that can monitor your health at all times. Can you list the 18 sensors for us? Yes, there's a barometer. Um, there is a, a thermometer. There is a heart rate monitor. There is a cholesterol indicator. Um, there is a blood sugar level indicator. Um, there is a... Um, Oh goodness, there's so many. Um, there, there's a body temperature monitor. Uh, there is an accelerometer. Uh, there's body also te- sorry to interrupt. A body mm-hmm. temperature mo- uh, monitor would be another a different thermometer. That's correct because the thermometer I previously mentioned was referring to the outside air temperature. So the body temperature sensor is taking the temperature of your body. Uh, there's an accelerometer, I believe I said. Uh, there's also a speedometer to tell you how fast you're going. And also a pedometer, which is telling you how many steps that you have taken in a day. Um, there's also a battery life indicator, which tells you how much battery is left. There's a sensor that does that as well. There's altitude. It tells you how high up you might be. Um, there's uh, also uh, a, a humidity check. I don't I don't believe I mentioned that yet. Um, no. it, it checks the, the relative humidity. There's uh, also a, um, 
a, a GPS locator that tells you exactly where you are, not only in the world, but within your own home. There's a oh. Wi-Fi sensor that is searching for networks all around the area. And, of course, our LTE and 4G sensor that's picking up uh, different signals for you to connect with. And then uh, there is the... Uh, stomach monitor that is tracking what you've put into your body and giving a caloric output uh, to the watch via our health app. Um, and then there's a, a mood sensor which has been compared to the mood rings that people used to wear as a fad in the 90s, but now this is a real feature. We can tell your mood. And then finally, there is a brainwave indicator and that uh, is sensing the, the brain activity in both the left and right side of your brain that is remarkable i'm speechless now it seems like you are venturing into the medical side of society is are you interested in medicine as well was this a passion i think the connection of health and medicine and technology is a very exciting space, and I think we're going to see a lot of new platforms and innovations that come out in this intersection. Think about your health records. You go to a doctor, and what's behind the secretary when you get to the doctor's office? Lots of file folders, right? Even today, lots of doctor's offices. In fact, most doctor's offices have these manila folders stacked to the wall, and we're seeking to modernize that in the digital age. Why not have your health record protected by Touch ID on your iPhone so your fingerprint unlocks this? Why not have these health records with you at all times when you need them most in an emergency situation? Now, is there a way that an EMT can plug up to your your Apple Watch if you're um, if you're uh, passed out or something? And absolutely, an EMT could take your finger and unlock your iPhone six or six plus and activate the uh, iWatch and go into the health app. Now, there's been some controversy that if an EMT could do that, couldn't a robber or a murderer do that too? Well, yes. we're going to be equipping EMTs with a special chip uh, that will reside uh, microchipped into the back of their neck, which gives them an override to Touch ID. Um, this would is this We're looking to roll this out in 2016. Would this be a part of the licensing process for an EMT? Once an EMT is Apple certified, and we hope that all EMTs will want to have the Made with Apple logo associated with their ID card, they will have this microchip inserted into the back of their neck, much like you would track an animal with a microchip, a very harmless and removable chip that will allow them access to health data when you need it most. Now, I have to admit, all of this is really over my head. I've always been something of a Luddite. Um, personally, I'm, I've kind of been a Windows guy most of my life, you know? Hey, give me a old-fashioned Windows 98 desktop any day of the week. I, I don't know the difference between an iCloud and an a, a eyeball, you know? Now that you're here, Tim Cook, is there any way that you'd be able to help me set up my email account? Well, you know, oh, yes, iCloud I trouble with this. iCloud makes it easy. If you have an Apple ID, if you have an iTunes account, you already have an iCloud account. It's whatever your username is at iCloud.com. And you can set that up and have it work seamlessly with your desktop or your laptop using OS X Yosemite. With the continuity and handoff feature, it'll go right to your iPhone or your iPad, and you'll even be able to check your email on your watch. Now, Elliot, do you have an email account? Are you using email? I, I don't. I don't. I am my nephew told me that I have to get on email, and, well, um, I haven't quite been able to figure it out, but perhaps your products will streamline that process for me. We have made our computers so easy that the dumbest, stupid idiot can use them. And that's the power of Apple, is making sure that the dumbest person on the street, the most backwards, mentally challenged 
person who's been cut off from society living on an iceberg in Antarctica, if you find that person, he can use Apple software because we are designing it with him in mind. Do you personally have a soft spot for dumb civilians? You know, uh, we don't discriminate between dumb people or smart people. Apple is open to all kinds of diversity, and you shouldn't have to have a certain IQ or cognitive ability to be able to take advantage of iOS 8 and OS X 10 Yosemite. Mm. Speaking of diversity, in 2013, Out Magazine named you the most powerful LGBT person in the world. Given this incredible title, I have to ask you, what does the initialism LGBT stand for? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that would be lesbian, gay, uh, transgender, and and bisexual. Mm -hmm. And I live a very private life, and I like my privacy, but I did feel this past fall it was important for me to publicly state my sexuality. Uh, I think as, as more people come out in that way, in a public way, the better it will be for the equality movement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Twitter seems uh, to sort of poo-poo it. They want to say, in other words, let's move on, let's not talk about this. How does that make you feel, as, really, as a, as a cultural icon? Well, again, I'm a private person, so I don't know specifically who you might be referring to on Twitter or if you're just referring to the zeitgeist. But, you know, I have a pretty thick skin growing up in Alabama um, as a gay man, and uh, I think that prepared me to be the CEO of Apple and to to handle criticism on a day-to-day basis. And, you know, you just have to tune it out. Is there a, is do you do practice affirmations or? You know, Steve was a spiritual person. Yes. Uh, Steve was into Eastern culture and, and was into meditation. I just like to drink a beer sometimes. I'll just kick back. We have a lot of good breweries in Cupertino, so I'll just have a local microbrew and 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 forget about my troubles over a glass of a, maybe an IPA. Mm, speaking of Steve Jobs, he once stated that taking LSD was one of the most profound experiences of his life. Have you ever indulged in many psychedelic drugs? You know, it's a funny story. When Steve first hired me to come on in 1998, we went on to a company retreat together. And he made uh, a vegetarian sandwich for all of the executives who were on the trip. Now, he did not tell us that he had put psychedelic mushrooms in the sandwich. So we went on quite a journey together. I had never experienced that before or since. But it was a wild, wild night out in the woods of Yosemite together on these mushrooms. Did you react playfully? Was it a joke, or were you? I had a good trip. I I remember laughing a lot. I rolling around in the ground. I woke up. I was dirty. I was I was muddy, and I looked over, and Johnny Ive was sitting there, and in his notebook he had scribbled the designs for the first iPod, and I was blown away by it. And a man named Tony Fidel took those designs and he he made the iPod together with Johnny's help. Yeah, regarding Johnny Ive, all of well, many products are iMac, iPod. And, uh, why is it not iWatch? Well, there's a company in, in Europe uh, that actually already had the trademark for iWatch um, and we thought about negotiating with them in order to to get that trademark and our initial conversations were a little hostile um, from them they were essentially holding the name ransom so we basically said fuck you it'll be apple watch we don't need the i anymore it's it's apple we own that it seems like one would be living their own life and then having 
a replica of it on their wrist. Does does that seem a little bit um, like it would be cutting off one from society? Or, well, what? Andy, you know, people sometimes have a no phones policy at the dinner table or when you're out at a restaurant. And Apple Watch is a way to get around that because no one's going to ask you to take your watch off. So it might be rude to take your phone out and, and glance at your phone, but you can glance at your watch in a way that others around you don't even realize that you're tuning them out. I, I've been looking at my watch for most of this interview, and I don't think either one of you is, has noticed it yet, and that is the power of Apple Watch. But it seems like you arranged it so that constant iPad or iPhone users can sort of get their fix more often? Is Well, is- some might call it a fix, and I would call it productivity. During this interview, I've responded to nine emails. I've updated my Twitter. Um, I have checked the weather in Cupertino for my trip home tomorrow. I have checked into my Delta flight and confirmed that they have my medallion number. I have accomplished so much during this interview that would not be possible without Apple Watch. I mean, if I'm being honest, I, I did notice that you were glancing down at your watch. Yes, for... you were constantly raising and lowering your arm. You might have peripherally noticed, but it, it wasn't... It was very high, like but your glasses. But it wasn't... So, but you didn't comment on it. I, it wasn't I, something that you commented on. I didn't on. want to interrupt. Exactly. And had I been on my phone, it would have been such a transgression that you would have had I must say that was, it was a bit distracting. It. Well, you know... Th- there's going to be sacrifices. In order to do a, an NPR interview and simultaneously do my job, there's not everybody, I can't please everyone all the time. We'll return shortly to our interview with Apple CEO Tim Cook. We turn now to Ingrid K. Lyons for Street Beat. The road less traveled might sound romantic and adventurous, but here in New York City, taking the road less traveled can result in robbery, assault, rape, or murder. Crime is on the rise due to influences by indie films causing most young citizens to have infantile fantasies about starring in their own life movie. The veil of police protection is penetrable, especially when abandoning common sense due to acute and constant ethnocentric delusions and narcissism around the hours of 11 o'clock at night to 5 o'clock in the morning. Long alleyways, dead ends, and Chinatown basements may seem like a whimsical promenade through an Igby Goes Down tale, but will most likely result in a scene with Jack the Ripper. Have sex with innumerable musicians? Walk around topless in public? Do coke all night with your gay best friend on a stranger's living room floor? That's not a musician, that's AIDS. That's not a topless walk, that's rape. That's not your gay best friend. That's a human trafficker doping you up before he stuffs you in a box and ships you to Long Island City. Wake up, you stupid idiot, and pull up that tank top strap that's been hanging off your shoulders since you arrived to the city. No one watches you to see how good you look. People want to hurt you. Don't take the road less traveled. Take the fucking F train. Real life indie film nuances. That's Paris, of course. Ingrid K. Lyons. Street Beat. New York City. We return now to our interview with Apple CEO, Tim Cook. It seems to be common knowledge that Mac, Apple, does have uh, what one would call sweatshops. Why? How, how, how is that okay? Well, I personally have toured the Foxconn facility in Shenzhen province, and to call it a sweatshop I think is not fair. First of all, just from a literal standpoint, it is a very air-conditioned facility, and it has to be. There's very expensive hardware that these these wonderful people are manufacturing. And the conveniences of working in a place like Foxconn, where your home, a dormitory really, is right next to where you work. I mean... Can all of the people in and I'm from the Bay Area and all of the people who were commuting in on the on the Bay Bridge and stuck in traffic all day. Well these people in Shenzhen province and Foxconn, they they wake up and they walk not not twenty meters 
and they're at their station right from their bunk bed. So there's there's a quality of life that might not be our culture. A, a Western person might look at that facility and say, you know, I don't know that I'd want to share a room with 10 other people. I, I don't know if I'd want to work a 13-hour day. But who are we to judge their culture and and their their eastern way of work that's that's not up to me to judge when you were working for compact uh, you were very successful you were not only on the rise you were you were you had risen uh, and jobs was trying to steal you away mm. and you thought that People thought you must have been out of your mind to go on to a sinking ship. Right. What What was that time like for you? Well, that was a that was a very turbulent time for me making that decision. And a lot of my friends said, "You're crazy. Don't. You, why would you go with Apple now?" The instant I met Steve, I knew I wanted to work with this man. He took me into his office and he handcuffed me to his couch. And he turned the lights off, and he put on Abbey Road by the Beatles. And he turned it on real loud, and he put on a black light. And it was then I realized that all the posters in his office were black light posters. And he left, and he shut the door, and I, I heard the door lock. And I listened to Abbey Road from start to finish, watching these black light posters. And he came back in, and he unhandcuffed me. The lights were still off. Black light was still on. And he said, I want you to work with me. Come on this journey. Take a, take a chance. And I said, Steve, you had me the moment you turned the lights off. Is Was there ever a time when you have disagreed with Steve despite his methods? You know, I would say the only argument that I ever got into with Steve Jobs came when he picked me to be his replacement. I said, Steve, I'm not good enough. No one can follow you. Sell the company. End it. End on a high note. I can't do this. No one can be you. And he said, Tim, you already are. Mm. You already are. So he picked someone to replace himself as himself. He saw you, he basically wanted not a new person, but himself to live he on. He had been slowly transforming me into him every day. Whether it was showing up at home and finding that there was an extra black turtleneck in my closet. And I don't know how it got there. I don't know how he had the keys to my house, but he did somehow. Little details like that, the the way that he, all of a sudden I'd wake up in the middle of the night and put my glasses on, and they'd be circle frames, and I don't wear circle frames. Little details like that that he was inserting into my life by breaking and entering into my home, that was how he was preparing me to take over his job. I think that's you. Dad? Is that your iPad? Yeah, it's fucking silent, this goddamn thing. Sorry. Well, you know, now with iPads, you can have your phone calls forwarded to your iPad, and that is a new feature with OS 8 that we're very excited about. Maybe you should consider doing that next time on Dean before we start recording. You're absolutely correct. I am... I'm a bit savvy technologically, but there are some things, some areas where in which I lack. You know, it used to be rude when a phone would ring in a setting like an interview or, or the dinner table. I have made six phone calls during this interview with my Apple Watch, and you all have not noticed. That's the beauty of Apple Watch. Speaking through the words in which you're answering us? Yes, you might not have realized, but often my answers to you were also answers to my wife about our plans for dinner tomorrow night. Is that what you were telling her when you were saying you were naming all those locations, Gaza? and? That's that? right. We're going to a Palestinian restaurant in Cupertino tomorrow. 
That is multitasking I at have, its finest. I have to say, I did, had no idea that you were conducting another conversation. Once you put an Apple Watch on your wrist, you will understand everything. Hmm. But I have to say that... I, I should have, also say I don't have a wife. You know, you're not in the public eye here, so to right. speak. You're... I don't want to say this. Well, when I said wife, I meant it as sort of the figure of speech, so the person in my life who I have dinner plans with. Right. Now that you are the CEO of Apple, um, have you ever considered asking Ashton Kutcher to portray you in a film? You know, I've thought about that. I've thought about that a lot, that one day there will be a biopic about me in all likelihood. Maybe not as big as as Steve Jobs' biopic, but but somewhere there will be, my story will be told. Mm -hmm. And I lay in bed at night and I think, what cast member from that 70s show might play me? Who who would play Tim Cook? Well, there, there are four male characters Unless, of course, if you're going maybe like the modern Shakespearean route where females do play males, then in that case we have, I I believe it's a full seven or eight if you count the sister, Eric's sister. Well, I believe Eric's sister, the actress that portrayed her, overdosed um, a couple years ago. Well, they could Photoshop. or. I'm hoping it's Valderrama. I just want to say that. That's my my hope. But he is great. I just find it hard I, I it's there's really no way to interact with a watch without it seeming like I, oh, I gotta go you know like kind of anxiously looking at the time even if you are just checking an email or talking to your significant other well you know during this interview i've actually been on three other podcasts via my apple watch again so the questions are the other podcasts are asking must be very similar to to ours well one is about cooking um there's another podcast uh where you're supposed to talk about the best day of your life and i'm also on mark Marin's podcast right now too all through apple watch I can only imagine that there's some sort of app that's like a word scrambler that is re-spitting out the words you're telling us and and reorganizing them to make sense in these other podcasts. Yeah, that well, it's Siri, really. Siri knows how to parse words, and that Siri knows what you want to say before you say it, and that's the power of, of Siri. When we bought Beats from Dr. Dre and, and Jimmy... We knew that music streaming was the future. And we come from an era where people would purchase records and then cassettes and CDs or MP3s from iTunes. And the culture has shifted where we don't want to choose our own music anymore. Why not let a streaming service like Beats tell you what you want to listen to? That's one less problem in my life. I don't have to choose what my favorite song is anymore. Beats will tell me what my favorite song is. An employee of mine um, worked on the Apple Watch team, a designer. He got married last weekend. And he said that when it was time for his first dance with, with his bride, he raised his watch to his lips and he said Siri first dance and Siri chose the song and it was perfect what was the song well it was a bit of a a funny story Um, Siri had misheard what he said as it was a a noisy reception venue and Siri had heard first trance instead of first dance so it was a a mid 90s trance compilation that Siri played. It was about a 13 minute song. Drum and bass. Trance. So it was an unusual first dance but it worked and the crowd was charmed by it. 
Usted habla español. Un poquito, sí. Do you find that this helps you uh, conectar con otros países? Claro. Hay una audiencia muy grande en los países como México, Americana del Sur. Hay... Hay mucha gente quien necesitan pagar dinero para los productos de Apple. ¿Y por qué no hablas en español? Yo creo que... Excuse me, it's been a long time. Yo creo que será algo muy especial para la nación de América si hablarías en español de vez en cuando. Entiendo, pero soy un hombre muy privado y por eso hablando en otras lenguas son... Thank you so thank much, you for, so joining much us. for being on the show today. Thank you, Tim Cook. Uh, thank oh, thank so you. Much. It's been an honor. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's been my, sorry, uh, my pleasure. Leave. I'm sorry, you have to leave right now. Oh, the yes. door. The doors are on a timer. Yeah, and... they lock automatically. I see. Okay. So we'll leave after you. You you go ahead. All right. Thank you. Yes, but quickly, it's it's dangerous. As always, we conclude this week's episode with our randomly selected New York City artist and longtime listener Charlie Todd, promoting his work for our billions of listeners. It's so exciting to be able to plug. Uh, this is Charlie Todd from the group Improv Everywhere. You can find us on improveverywhere.com. We're a New York City-based prank collective that causes scenes of chaos and joy in public spaces. Find us on YouTube and improveverywhere.com. Thank you for tuning in. Please subscribe to Cultural Icons on iTunes. And don't forget to rate us five stars. And like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash culturalicons. This has been Cultural Icons with Elliot P. Gershwin and on Dean St. Leventhal on WCEU PBS CNN the CW Daisy and QR National Broadcast Radio.